because of his crew. And I have a feeling if we don't get to it first, it's gonna cost us a whole lot more. Hey, hey, welcome back to the Modern Sportsman in Burnsville, Minnesota. And we got a review for you tonight. Tonight, a little special treat, we're gonna be going over Springfield's new striker fire platform, the Echelon. A lot of people have been talking about this. How does this thing stack up? Where did it come from? What role does this baby fill? So let's go over that real quick. So back in 2002, Springfield came out with the XD line. That was their big competitor. Again, the tactical Tupperware market was striker fired polymer frame handguns against the Glock mainly. But times have changed. Technology has advanced with modularity, with options and features for these handguns. And the XD is Honestly, I think with the uh, uh, the advent of the Echelon and what Springfield's trying to do, I think we're going to start seeing the uh, the XD line get phased out and replaced with the Echelon. So really, we're asking two questions tonight. How does this baby shoot and function? And how does it stack up against Springfield's XD line? Now, love it or hate it, Springfield's XD line has been pretty popular. And with the military community, with law enforcement, less so. Uh, a lot of people tend to be mixed towards Glock or go with uh, SIG, uh, anything like that over say Springfield. I personally don't like the XD. I don't like it. I think it's I don't think it's a good platform. I think their magazine releases are too stiff. I think the additional of that beaver tail safety on the back end has caused some issues and just overall I don't like the platform. So where has the Echelon come from? Well, this is coming out of Croatia as well. So it is an import and this started uh, hitting production in 2021. So coming out of Croatia, Springfield working with them with specifically uh, HS product made in uh, Croatia. Uh, and this is gonna phase out that system. And what they're really, uh, the XD systems, and what this is really going to do is that the Echelon line is tackling uh, SIG and what SIG did. Now, SIG's pedigree, if you understand what they did with the P320 line and what they did with the army contract trying to find a new sidearm for the US military, was that they had interchangeable part systems in the inside. And Echelon has named that the central operating group, where we can actually take out the trigger assembly in this platform and we can place it into something else, into a different frame. What that does from a military law enforcement standpoint is that's really easy for armorers then to maintain systems. Oh, we have a problem with the frame, we have a problem with the safety, we have a problem with the trigger. Well, we can remove the central operating group, replace it, or we can take it out and put it in, if we have like a frame failure or something like that, and we can remove that uh, central operating group, uh, the cog, and put that into another frame. So we have some modularity there. And what ends up being is that the firearm itself isn't uh, and the receivers uh the, the lower frame the lower receiver isn't serialized and the slide isn't the barrel and the central operating group are the pieces that are actually going to be serialized in this case as opposed to uh, other modern firearms other modern po uh, polymer firearms or say something like a smith and wesson mp 2.0 where you would actually have etched into the stainless steel uh, embedded into the uh, frame you would actually have that serial number placed into it okay so that, that's kind of one of the big difference now how does this actually stack up out of the box right now, and we haven't taken it to the range yet, and you bet we're gonna take this to the range tonight. We're gonna give this a few rounds down range. Out of the box, the stippling is better. It is much better than an XD's. I think the XD feels like cheap plastic in my hand. Hate it, can't stand it. This baby, way better. So a much more aggressive stippling, uh, very similar to say, a little less aggressive than an uh, MMP 2.0, where that feels like skateboard tape. And the grip overall, it feels like a SIG and ergonomics. How it's uh, uh, shaped, how it bevels outwards with the palm swell in that, how the beaver tail sits in that in your hand. Uh, I th it really does feel like a SIG and this is their take on, on the SIG platform, okay? Well, let's actually feel this and, and how it actually functions too. The trigger on this thing is quite spongy. In fact, I don't like the trigger particularly. And we'll kind of see how it stacks up on the wrench tonight. Maybe I'll change my mind with it. But if we look at it, and let's go ahead and give that a pull and try that trigger. So we have our safety, which is hinged in the center, like many modern uh, striker fired handguns, okay? So that takes up a little bit. Then we have about three millimeters of pull backwards. And in their defense, the actual take up, very smooth, no sponginess. It goes straight back. And then I hit the wall, and the wall does have a slight, slight sponginess to it. There it is. Here's our reset. Very light reset. I don't like that particularly. It doesn't feel as tactile as I release that forward. 
It's not as responsive. Very, very light. The break on the wall is pretty good, but pretty good is relative. I, it feels to me, it feels like a Glock trigger. Yeah, it's better than a SIG trigger. I don't like the P320 and the M17 triggers. I don't like them out of the box. I think they're garbage. I think the gun's good. I think it's a decent platform that, that SIG created there. I don't like their triggers. I think they feel like they feel like sponge cake in my hand, uh, which probably makes absolutely no sense, but that's how I'm describing it and that's what I'm going with. This feels better than a SIG's trigger out of the box, but I think the ergonomics overall, I'm, I would give it to a SIG. The trigger is better, but I don't like the reset in particular. And what other modular uh, portions do I have this? We have front serrations for our press check. Uh, we have our sights. In this case, we actually do have a tritium night sight on this, which is nice. And we do have a U-shape cutout in this one as well. We have a riser for our, our optics cutout. And the optics cutout, uh, they actually have pretty decent optic cutout on this. So th there's quite a few options that you can throw on this here. We threw on a Sig Romeo on the top there, and that's what we'll be using tonight. We have decent rail space, so we can throw flashlights on there also. And we'll do a quick breakdown of this firearm right now and take a look at kind of the guts on the inside of this thing. All right, so here we have the Springfield Tactical Tupperware imported from Croatia. This is the one of the newest lineups for Springfield. This is the Echelon. So just like we kind of did with the Daniel Defense H9, we're gonna do a quick breakdown of this and we'll open it up and take a look at the inside of this baby. Um, some of the notable features that we have on it right off the bat, and we have our slide stop and release. It's actually much more like a, a, a lever, just kind of horizontally sticking out the side. Pretty intuitive to hit, very tiny, you know, I wish maybe it was a little bit bigger, uh, more of just kind of a qualm. Uh, the magazine release is a lot better than say the XD lineup uh, that Springfield has. Uh, I think it's it's much easier to utilize uh, and it, it's not as stiff. Every time I fired an XD, I found that the, that magazine release is a lot stiffer. Stipling, stipling is a lot better than the XD as well. Not quite as aggressive as say something like the Smith & Wesson m 2.0 line. That's definitely got way better stippling on that. And that grip just feels, mm, it feels like it's skateboard tape, man. Like it's just not gonna drop out of your hand. Like it just becomes one with you. The ergonomics overall uh, with the grip angle is fairly good. It has a fairly high beaver tail. And we do have a little bit of a cutout, try to get that bore axis get down. But this, you know, overall, I think this sits pretty high. Uh, our takedown lever is a little bit different than other ones. Instead of pulling it straight back like we normally would on a striker fired and opening it up, we actually have to have the slide locked to the rear. We drop that down and we're gonna release that and ride it forward slowly to actually take this thing apart. On the inside, we have our guide rod, we have our barrel, and we have a fairly robust guide bar, rod retention uh, bracket right here that's gonna hold that in place. So uh, pretty simple design overall. It's standard tactical Tupperware, nothing to necessarily write home about. All right, so we have a competitor against SIG, against Glock, uh, lots of modern features. This is definitely a, a, this is not an extension of the XD line. I am definitely gonna defend Springfield in that, not connected to the XD line. This would be, the this is the next generation for Springfield for uh, polymer uh, frame handguns. This is going to be what phases out their XD line. Of course, this is just my speculation and my opinion on that. And I think it would be silly to not do that otherwise. Uh, as overall, so far, it feels like a better package in my hand than say well, the the XD uh, series of firearms. But ultimately, how is that going to stack up? Let's actually take this baby out to the range. Let's go throw some range uh, rounds down range and actually feel how this firearm functions in action. All right, we're out on the range. Hey, and don't forget, like and subscribe down below if you like the content that we're coming out with. And don't forget to follow us on all social media and check out our website at www.aegisdefensesolutions.com. That's A-E-G-I-S, defensesolutions.com, all one word. And you can get in touch with us to check out all the programs that we're offering as far as active shooter training and explosive and IED awareness training for all kinds of organizations, homes, businesses, and uh, nonprofit organizations as well. But, all right, so here we have, we got our, X, or excuse me, we have our Springfield Echelon, I almost called it the XD there, and but it's definitely not the XD like I was kind of mentioning inside. And we're gonna put this through a few paces and kind of go maybe do a, a few drills, maybe do an El Presidente, uh, maybe do a quick uh, a succession uh, four shot drill and belt those out pretty quick. Let's really put this trigger through its paces and see what it feels like and what my thoughts are compared to the Springfield XD. It's 
basically what it's replaced. Right, so we'll just do a quick four shot succession drill on that. Function worked pretty well. Trigger felt good. I wouldn't say anything special out of the box. Very similar to say a Glock trigger. Uh, you know, really comparative. The trigger feels way better than an XD's. I think the XD triggers, uh, you know, I already mentioned their magazine release are pretty stiff. I think the triggers are pretty stiff and spongy too. Kind of a worst of both worlds uh, on how their triggers function. This trigger on this firearm in particular is better. I, I, I do like it. And as far as accuracy, now that was just a quick four shots. I've got three in A zone. I did screw up. I got one in a C zone. Uh, definitely, what does that tell me? It's definitely the shooter in this case. Definitely got to get some more time on the range. As should everybody, don't forget to train. That's always a big thing with, you know, you're owning a firearm, know how to operate that tool and don't forget to do your training. So, uh, all right, let's do a quick reload drill with that and put it up again. Magazine release released pretty well during that reload. Uh, very, very quick, intuitive. Uh, I believe that even though it doesn't have the flared mag well on that, insertion of that magazine went very smooth, very intuitive, no issues with that. I think overall, one thing that they could do to improve on this firearm, and it's what Glock already does a lot, or even if you were to take a Glock frame, send it in to get worked on, or even do it yourself, dremeling out a portion of the grip, in particular with the trigger guard, maybe getting that uh, magazine release just a little bit higher too. You could probably drop the overall bore access on this firearm lower into the hand. Recoil overall felt very controllable, very reasonable. Uh, it feels like a Glock. This is, you know, it, it, it felt, uh, in fact, I would, I would even go as far as to say, I think the Springfield overall is a better package, fires a lot better. The trigger is better on this than it is a Springfield, like I mentioned earlier. I still, uh, then, uh, excuse me, a Springfield than a SIG. I think the SIG triggers out of the box still hot garbage. This trigger field uh, felt way better. So I would do, I, I would say that, uh, I mean, it, it's a comparative platform. You're not getting anything crazy. You're not getting anything super innovative. Uh, SIG already came up with the central operating group on the inside, it being the trigger control group being removable and modular where we can put it into a different package, compact frame, full size, duty size, whatever. Uh, it's already been done. They did it. And as far as I know and the research I've done so far, it works just well. The trigger feels like a Glock trigger. Nothing revolutionary there. I believe the grip angle is pretty good. Feels like a SIG's grip angle. Nothing new there. Decent optic cutout. Nothing new there. They're not doing anything new with this. It's just a solid platform. It is tactical Tupperware that will work. And I dare say the same, uh, uh, the same description I would give to a Glock out of the box, it just works. It's a utilitarian brick that whatever you throw through this thing, it'll probably run it just fine. Now, I've only done about 50 rounds to this one, so honestly, I couldn't say through any stress testing how this is gonna handle up. I'd have to check out the Modern Sports Master guys on how their rental is doing and how many rounds have been put through that and how that's going through its paces. That would definitely be uh, uh, something worthwhile to, to ask them about. So, uh, other features that I like on this, I do like the slide release on it. The slide release is very easy to hit. Thumb reaches down pretty simply, drops that thing very quick. Uh, the takedown lever, it's not bad. It's only on one side, so it is not ambidextrous. Here we have it over on the left-hand side, right side, it's not there. So we don't have any ambidextrousness to this. And the magazine release is ambidextrous in this case, and so is the slide release. So for our left-handed shooters, you still have a decent platform. And uh, as opposed to say a Glock or a Smith uh, M&P series, the slide release and the magazine release on the opposite side uh, those ambidextrous controls not stiff i find the mp the ambidextrous controls are particularly stiff especially the slide release it is incredibly tough especially for a new shooter to get their thumb in there and drop that slide down if they're a left-handed shooter very very stiff same with the glock the gen 5s out of the box if it's got those ambidextrous controls you're getting some some stiff features with this this i would say the ambidextrous controls out of the box if you're a lefty not a bad platform to go with actually uh, the, I think the, the controls for a left-handed shooter, way more intuitive, less stiff, easier to operate. I think, and you know, and I would say that this is that one feature that this has overall uh, is that it's easy to operate. You know, uh, 
It's not as, as you know, it's just got a few more bells and whistles than say like a Glock does, but overall, nothing new, nothing new under the sun with this. But I mean, would I, would I recommend it? Would I endorse it? You know what you do you, uh, it's not bad. It'll work, it'll function. So uh, honestly, uh, let's throw a few more rounds to it and see how this thing functions some more. All right, so the Springfield Echelon, out of the box, what do I think? What's my final verdict? It works. It's a utilitarian brick. It's a little fancier. We got some front serrations for a press check if we want tritium night sight on this. You uh, cut out uh, rear iron sight. Decent optics cut out. Uh, seems to, uh, to support a lot of different uh, optic packages on there, so that's fantastic. Decent grip angle, but honestly, what is it trying to do? You get hitting an MSRP of this thing about $600. And there's a lot of other firearms in that same price bracket that do something very similar. There's nothing new under the sun with this firearm. And that's probably the biggest issue I have is it, with it is that there's, there's really nothing new with it. And that's not necessarily bad. It works. It functions. You know, if you wanted to go with Springfield, you're a fan of the XD line, this is a good replacement for the XD. Uh, I'm not an XD van personally, but if you are and you like product of these uh, firearms being imported out of Croatia, by all means, this would be a decent package for you. But I think there's better firearms in the same price bracket or even jumping up a little price bracket, say the $800 range. I think if you want something with a polymer strike fire system like this, something like a shadow system would probably be even better. Uh, I think if you want that modular trigger control group and the grip angle and ergonomics uh, that the Echelon is supporting, I think you'd be better off going to SIG P320 or an M17. Now, there's just better options on the market. Is this terrible? No, it's not terrible, but it's just out of the box. It's nothing that's wowing me in particular. It has a decent trigger. Uh, it's definitely better than a Glock trigger out of the box. It's worse than a, uh, better than a SIG trigger as well, but it's no Walter. It's no 1911. Uh, it's no Daniel Defense, their new line, the H9. It's definitely not that. Uh, but ultimately, in the end, uh, these firearms, you know, as, as, as simple as this is, and with all its uh, features, it's still not as good as the person behind it. So don't forget to go get training. Go make yourself a better shooter, a more informed shooter, more educated. Uh, understand that you are going to be the more professional individual on the other side of this firearm. And that's what's going to make you a better citizen overall, is to continue that journey for yourself and continue to seek training. It doesn't have to be with your low, uh, uh, you know, with us here, uh, with Aegis Defense Solutions. There's all kinds of really good training programs across the country. Go find something that works for you and that uh, you can go to, you can afford, uh, and engage into that community and engage yourself to become that better shooter overall. So thanks for sticking us with us uh, tonight and going for our review with the Echelon by Springfield, uh, this Croatian import. Hope you enjoyed it. Take a like and subscribe down below and join us with your future videos if you like what we're doing. And we'll look forward to having you with us next time. And remember, stay prepared, not scared. God bless and good night.